They have to really uh, attract uh, foreign direct investment. They have to attract uh, foreign uh, multilateral. Uh, so, sorry, foreign um, uh, multinational companies in the manufacturing uh, sector because uh, technology is needed. Uh, the production, uh, uh, you know, technology uh, has to be uh, has to be improved in many countries. And uh, the link with uh, the global distribution network uh, is also needed. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, adopting a policy to encourage uh, foreign multinational companies to come would be, uh, would be the first step. Uh, and also those multinational companies uh, need a lot of high quality infrastructure, you know, transport system, the availability of electricity, water resources, uh, ICT. So infrastructure investment uh, is uh, quite important. And uh, the human capital. Human capital needed for the production of uh, manufacturing uh, products and, and also to acquire uh, foreign uh, knowledge, foreign technology, foreign know-how, uh, so that uh, you know, uh, these uh, know-how should be transferred to, to these uh, people working uh, in your own uh, countries. Supply chains uh, mean that uh, you know to produce uh, final goods, you don't produce everything in your country. Okay, you try to produce uh, the needed parts and components elsewhere, uh, in other countries where the production costs are, are low, and uh, you know appropriate uh, human uh, human capital is available. So rather than producing everything within, within your country, you try to regard uh, various countries as sort of uh, different factories, okay? And, and then the final uh, products are assembled. And you don't have to assemble the final products in your own country. You can be a part of a factory of a global firm. So in that way, uh, you can uh, you can really uh, exploit your comparative advantage, and, uh, and at the same time uh, you can connect your economy with uh, other various various economies through the trade uh, in parts and components and various various uh, intermediate products, and that that's really the way that the manufacturing sector has been developing in many other parts of, uh, of the world. So, so uh, supply joining uh, in the supply chain uh, is uh, extremely important. Well, Asia is a growing region and Latin America is also a growing region. So uh, mutual trade uh, is going to increase tremendously. And so far, uh, Asians have been exporting uh, manufacturing uh, products to Latin America, and Latin America has been exporting uh, resources, uh, energy, mineral products, agricultural products to, to Asia. This sort of division of labor uh, is going to continue to expand, uh, I have no question. Uh, but uh, one important question is whether uh, Latin American countries want also increase uh, manufacturing uh, products. And to do so, uh, many Latin American countries uh, may want to invite uh, more multinational companies into your own economy and join uh, in, in the uh, uh, you know, global supply chains. Well, uh, well, if uh, Latin American countries can become a competitor of ASEAN, I think that would be excellent because uh, 
Japanese manufacturing firms and also many other uh, countries manufacturing firms uh, want to go to many other countries. So, so ASEAN should not be the only, only region uh, to receive uh, uh, multinational companies in manufacturing. I think uh, it would be excellent uh, if uh, many Latin American countries can, can join in that process. Now Mexico, Mexico is uh, receiving a lot of uh, uh, foreign direct investment and uh, Mexico is part of uh, the U.S. supply chains. Huh? So, so Mexico is uh, very advanced in that sense. Now Chile and other Latin American countries, whether they want to be like that or not, uh, is uh, I think is something that uh, I am uh, very much interested in in uh, exploring. Uh, I think uh, the Pacific Alliance is an excellent, excellent uh, arrangement uh, among uh, the four countries uh, with uh, uh, you know uh, reform-minded uh, countries and uh, a great openness to trade and foreign direct investment. And each country, each country acting may be a bit too small. But uh, if uh, Chile, Peru, Colombia, and Mexico, if they can, they can form a bigger market, I think uh, they can be more effective. And uh, I think uh, there's a greater chance for these countries, uh, other than Mexico, uh, to develop uh, supply chains, to join in supply chains. Uh, Mexico is already in the global uh, and North American supply chain. So, so this uh, would have a great potential, and, and in particular in connecting, connecting uh, these countries with uh, Asian, Asian countries. And uh, uh, I, uh, I uh, believe that uh, this Pacific Alliance movement is going to have some impact on Mercosur countries because uh, because they also want to develop uh, uh, their economies, uh, including uh, the manufacturing sector. So, so there would be some, uh, some competition between the Pacific Alliance and Mercosur, uh, which is healthy. And also, uh, if uh, there is a link between Pacific Alliance and Mercosur to be achieved, I think uh, you know, Latin America would have a great uh, future. Well, no, uh, no, it's a great uh, FDA, uh, and, and also it has a potential of setting the global trade agenda in the future, because it includes uh, both uh, developed countries and developing countries, and, and development issues are uh, included in there, like uh, intellectual property rights, state-owned enterprise reform, uh, labor standard, environmental standard, investment uh, issues, services trade. So, so many important uh, issues are included in there. So the TPP can be a model for the future global trading system. So, so in that sense, uh, TPP is not only great, but it's uh, very, very important for the future.